All right, so we're back, and I got to be honest, it's kind of a slow news day today, everyone. Not a ton is happening, except psych, I fucking lied. Everything has hit the wall. Shit has hit the fan all over the internet. Andrew Tate has gone from the top G to the top bunk of his GL sale. Logan Paul is preparing for a parody of himself, but not at his own expense, but quite literally at the expense of all the people that bought into the game he made that doesn't work and lost all their money. But that's not what our video is about today. Instead, we are talking about the potential for us losing our main event for Misfits number four. KSI and Dylan Dennis is in jeopardy. At my tender ripe age of 30, I am way too old for this shit. But, break down. Let's go. All right, so yesterday, Dylan Dennis went on Chael Sonnen's show, started to expose a little bit of the contract talks between himself and KSI's team, AKA Mams Taylor and Misfits Boxing. So let's take a look and see what Dylan had to say. It's a lot of money to beat up a- First off, Dylan is looking like a absolute mess right here. <laughs> he unfortunately looks closer to the trailer park right here than he looks to the actual weigh-in number. <laughs> a guy that doesn't know how to fight. Um. But now, you know, between us, I don't know when it's going to come out. I feel like this fight won't happen. I think that they're starting to get scared. I think they saw clips or people, like even you saying that I was going to win. And they're trying to make like weird things in the contract now, two weeks before. I feel like they're looking for a way out. And uh... Weird things in the contract two weeks before. That's interesting. Now, that's an accusation that Mams Taylor has already come out and said is not true. This was in the original contract, and we're going to get into that in just a second. But but the fact that Dylan brings it up here is either a bold move by him to just flat out lie, or he's going back through his contract that he already signed, again, from Mams Taylor months ago, and said, okay, and is just now seeing what we're going to get into in a second is a rehydration clause. If that's the case, Dylan fucked up here. Uh, if it does happen like that, you know, I don't wait for nobody. I would jump on that Bell, uh, Bellator card. I think it's March 2nd or 3rd. It's not a professional fight, so they're trying to, like, do all, everything handicapped for me. And I'm not going to settle like that. I'm not like Tyron Woodley that needs to pay child support for eight baby mamas. Whoa. You know, I, I, Whoa. <laughs> what are we taking shots at T-Wood for? First off, he doesn't have eight baby mamas. I don't know what the accusation is here that Tyron Woodley fell for all of Jake's contractual bindings around the fight. No, Tyron Woodley was around the way he was supposed to be even when he took a fight on short notice. I guess that the accusation is Tyron Woodley got a tattoo to fight Jake the second time or something like that. I don't really know. But throwing around that he's got eight babies mama. Dylan's funny, man. Man, I'll give him credit. He's a funny fucking dude. I do what I want to do. So whatever happens, happens. I'll go back to what I, I do best, MMA, a real fight. Not a half a fight with these guys. I don't know how to fight. Is it possible that this fight gets canceled? Are you being sincere when you say that? I, I truly think that they're in over their head and they're trying to put like weird things. I don't know. I feel like they're just trying to handicap me and I won't be the kind of guy that will go into these fights with these guys handicapped. This is the second time Dylan's talked about getting a handicap and being a little sketched out by the, the contracts. And if again, all he's referring to is what was already in his original contract, that's not KSI's team's fault. And again, we're gonna get into it, but what Mams Taylor said was this contract was the original. This was not something that Dylan, this is not something they shoehorned into a contract or wrote into it later on to renegotiate. The promotion is saying this was already in your contract, this rehydration clause. Dylan is saying they're playing games two weeks ahead of time. Now going on to Chael's show and saying the same thing, he wants this information out in the public to, again, play perception. And without saying it, it sounds like he's saying, okay, I did sign this, but either I didn't see it in the contract or I didn't know it until recently, so, and hold the promotion hostage and say, I'm not showing up unless this thing's changed. The question is, is he bluffing or not? And again, we'll get into it, but Mams Taylor seems to think he's not. Um, You know, usually I really don't care, but it just seems like very, I don't know, it's just, a lot of fishy things going on, and uh, it's not on my side. I'm ready to go. So the fight's at 177. They want me to be weighing at 4 p.m. the day of the fight, only four pounds heavier. And if every pound that I don't make the weight on the second day, I get a penalty, which is very heavy for each pound. Okay, so that is finally where we get the answer as to what exactly this is. They want him at 177 to weigh in. That's fine. Dylan's made 175 before. Again, if he signed on to make the weight, I assume that Dylan can make the weight. Now, the second part of that is interesting. They want him to weigh in, in his words, four pounds over at 4 p.m. on fight day. I don't know if I've ever heard of something that strict on a rehydration clause. I've heard of fight day weigh-ins, and we can even go back to the Jake and Rachman fight. They wanted him to weigh in, I think, 10 or 15 pounds over at 12 p.m. on fight day, which would have still given him about eight to nine hours to rehydrate, but again, would have left him compromised, absolutely. But 4 p.m. on fight day, when the main event's probably gonna walk at 
nine, maybe 10. You're giving him six hours to rehydrate to what, again, I assume he's probably 190 to 200 pounds here. That's pretty strict, man. And listen, I know KSI doesn't make these contracts. Mims and Misfits Boxing does, but what it tells me is there is a little bit of trepidation as to how big Dylan really is compared to what they thought. And knowing that he probably can make the weight at 177 doesn't guarantee he stays close to it. So again, you're talking about Dylan maybe at 190, maybe 190 plus, cutting 20 pounds, getting to 177 and going straight back up. But on the other side, we have Mams Taylor and their team doing what they're supposed to do. Trying to look out for their guy, KSI being, I think Mams tweeted then deleted that KSI was 173 pounds at the moment, almost guaranteeing on the night he's not gonna be over 108. Guys should be fighting matchups around the same weight that aren't 20, 30 pounds bigger, so we don't have to deal this. I understand it's a limited pick of the litter right now, but ideally, that's the perfect fight. So we've heard Dylan's argument on this, but he did sign a contract, and according to Mams Taylor, it was done over two months ago, and Dylan's team said nothing. In a tweet from Mams, he says, here are the facts. I hate that I have to come with receipts again, but here we go. Number one, Dylan signed a contract, binding short form. Now that parentheses does kind of make your eyebrow stand up. What does that mean, binding short form? Well, I looked it up. Well, essentially a binding short form contract means that it's legally enforceable. In other words, if Mams and KSI's team really wanted to fight Dylan on this and say, hey, you're sticking to it, they could. And if Dylan didn't, he would be fined a hefty amount. As you heard him talk about in his video, every pound he's over, he's already getting fined. If he wasn't able or didn't want to stick within the weight rehydration clause, they could enforce it and he would either have to forfeit his purse or drop out of the fight. Number two, the contracted weight was 177.5 pounds with a rehydration clause limit of 185. So essentially they're giving him eight and a half pounds to get back to 185 and stay there. He cannot be above 185 on 4 p.m. of fight day. Number three, we tried to make 170 and he said that was too light. So we settled at 177.5. Neither Dylan nor his team objected to the rehydration clause until now. And here's where I was talking about that two month number becomes super important. If Dylan had an issue with this, he should have brought it up and not signed the contract two months ago. Then either we would have figured it out in different terms or gone with a different opponent. To make it out like we are being shady and throwing this in last minute is just messed up considering he has been treated with nothing but respect and courtesy. There's one of two things going on here and it's either Dylan and his lawyer team are so lackluster they did not spot a rehydration clause in the contract or they saw it didn't think it'd be a big deal, didn't object to it, and Dylan is not losing weight the way he thought he would. Let's not forget, it's been two years since Dylan fought, so him trying to cut weight isn't something he's had to do for a long time. But Dylan hasn't really responded other than calling KSI a hypocrite and showing the tweet he made to Jake. I'll just leave you guys with the fact that Dylan is a master troll, and he is going to let this drama play on continuously. Again, he studied at the school of Chael P. Son, and he studied at the school of pro wrestling, and he knows how to make everyone believe a work. I'm going to say my opinion is this fight is still happening and throughout this whole thing, Dylan kind of played Misfits Boxing and into giving him exactly what he wanted. Doesn't set a good precedent for the promotion, but Mams Taylor did come out and say this is a one-time deal. And that's why at some point, hopefully now, if you are Misfits Boxing and Mams Taylor, you have to put your foot down because if not, Dylan's gonna keep pushing the envelope. But all in all, like I said, I hope this thing goes down. We're still kind of holding on pins and needles. You guys give me your comments down below. Are we still okay here? I can't have another main event pull out. I can't, I can't do it. I can't have another Saturday night with your girl, AKA a main eventer pulling out. I really hope not, man, because I've been so excited for this card, but I don't have the answer. So is January 14th in jeopardy? Guess we'll find out.